This video, we're going to address some common concerns and questions we get about Radcliffe from people relocating to the Fort Knox, Elizabethtown area. Maybe you clicked on this video because you heard Radcliffe's not a good place to live. We hear this a lot. Why is that? So let's talk about it. So let's get to it. We have a question a lot of time with people coming in about Radcliffe and why they don't want to live in Radcliffe or they have question or questions and concerns. So in this video, I'm going to go through five points about Radcliffe that maybe aren't what you think they are. Is it a good place to live? Is it not? So a little backstory about me. I grew up in a small town outside of Hardin County, Mead County called Flaherty. I'm a Flaherty boy through and through. Um, that's a big part of who I am. Now Flaherty is about five to 10 miles, well, maybe 10 miles, maybe 10 ish miles. We'll go with 10 ish miles. Radcliffe. When I grew up, you know, back in the 1900s, um, that was where we went to go to like McDonald's and do those things. And so Radcliffe is a very much big part of my childhood. And so you know, I hear a lot of disparaging things about the town itself. And I think some of it is needs to be put in perspective. Point number one, crap. As far as perspective goes, like I don't know where you're coming from, but I think when you look at any kind of small town of Kentucky. I think Radcliffe is maybe 15,000 people. Depending on where you come from, I think maybe perspective may be a little different than maybe what you're used to. Radcliffe um, is roughly 20, 25,000 people. It's not a big town. And so I think when people come in, it's a military town. And so they kind of get this opinion about it that maybe isn't totally fair. So I'm gonna do five points this is Jared's opinion, facts by Jared. Uh, stuff that, you know, that and this, a lot of this is based off of my opinion. And so I'm a real estate appraiser, as you guys know. I've done thousands of appraisals over my career in Radcliffe. Um, and then kind of growing up and going to Radcliffe as a place to go. So I'm going to kind of give you a local local's perspective of Radcliffe. And so maybe this video will kind of help ease your mind or possibly clear up some misconceptions or possibly even confuse you more. But if it does and you have questions, just feel free to give me a call. My number's in the description below. Point number one, um, crime. Let's just get to the, let's get to the dirty one first. Um, crime in Radcliffe is like probably no worse than any other city. I think um, I have a good friend of mine who's a sergeant on the police department. They're busy, but they're not busy with like big stuff. They're busy with like somebody stole my cell phone. Um, hear a lot of those kind of complaints and things. Yes, there's things that happen, um, probably no more than anywhere else. But if you go back to your perspective of like a bigger city like Louisville or Cincinnati or something, Radcliffe's actually pretty sleepy. It does have some areas that aren't so sleepy, but take me to a town that doesn't have those areas. People are so like, you know, it's a military town. Military towns are rough, you know. You know, like I've lived in Radcliffe. I've lived in Radcliffe a few times. And Radcliffe is not a scary place. When you when you look at crime, and I have not pulled any statistics, this is just knowing police officers, friends of mine, who are state police, who are police officers in Elizabethtown, who are police officers in Radcliffe, who are police officers in Meade County, just the people I know. Typically what we see, what I hear on crime, it's like the same people. The guys who are doing bad stuff in E-Town are the same guys who are doing bad stuff in Radcliffe. And vice versa, because you know what? They're right next to each other. And that's just kind of where you go. So if you're in Radcliffe, you've got to go to E-Town if you want to go shopping or something. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But it's the same people moving back and forth between the two towns. So when you look at crime, and I have not pulled any data on this. This is just facts by me. It's not a whole lot of difference between Radcliffe and E-Town because you're dealing with the same people. There's tons of information you can Google and, and find. And, and honestly, when you look at stuff like this, you're going to find whatever you want. And so if you're looking for the bad stuff, you'll find the bad stuff. If you're looking for the good stuff, you'll find the good stuff. But honestly, the areas are so, so similar um, speaking that it's not much of a difference. Radcliffe has its sketchier parts of town. And guess what? E-Town has its sketchier parts of town. And Louisville has its sketchier part of town. And, and, and whatever it is, I mean, you can find those areas. Point number two, housing. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that you'll see the difference in Radcliffe 
if you look at a, a map of Radcliffe, one of the things that kind of hurts Radcliffe housing is that it butts up next to Fort Knox. If you look at the map, the entire east side of like Radcliffe is Fort Knox. There's nowhere for the town to grow. And then once you kind of, and, and the new growth has kind of been in Vine Grove, um, when, when you look at that, which is again, kind of the same area. So, but getting back to Radcliffe, because of the way it's kind of landlocked with Fort Knox, we don't see a lot of new housing developments in Radcliffe. There, there are a few, um, there's not many new ones and most of the new growth you're seeing are kind of in more of Elizabethtown or Vine Grove or even out in Meade County because they're not landlocked with, um, Fort Knox. So looking at Radcliffe housing, it is a little bit older housing. Um, it's just, it was built up before E-Town for the most part, because it, when, when you look at the gold vault coming in and the things that Fort Knox brought, you know, that's the town that got built first was Radcliffe. And so then it's landlocked. And so a lot of the houses there, are, you know, up, you know, anywhere from the sixties to the, I mean, there's stuff older than the sixties, but you know, most of that stuff was built from 60 to 2000. And so when you kind of can compare that to like E-Town where you have tons of new development, really there's some really nice neighborhoods over there and it's actually a little bit more affordable than Elizabethtown. So Radcliffe is really, when it gets down to it, it's just an older area. It's just a little bit older. It's just, it's landlocked. There's no, not, a, not a lot of growth for housing, but honestly, you know, people are going in there and starting to fix houses up and, and there are some, like I said earlier, there's, there's some really nice neighborhoods. And you can find some stuff that's really kind of new and nice and has all the newer amenities that you're looking for. But when you look at the schools and you look at just how they function, so we have three county high schools in Hardin County. You've got John Hardin High School, North Hardin High School, and Central Hardin High School. They are all a little bit different, but they're all the same. Um, it's kind of like buying a Chevy truck or buying a GMC. It's the same truck. It's just got a different badge on it. North Harden schools, like I know several of the teachers over there. I know, I know some of the principals. So we, Radcliffe kind of has this, or North Harden kind of has this reputation, like Radcliffe is such a bad town, which it is not. We've already kind of went over that, that since, since Radcliffe is the older town, that North Harden is the high school there, therefore it must be the worst high school. And that's just simply not the case. I mean, when you look at, like I'm like one of the principals there, is Mr. Mahone. I've known him. We grew up together. He's he's a retired Marine. No, he didn't. He's not a retired Marine. He was a Marine. Um, and then like, believe it or not, North Harden High School has a fantastic ag program. Mr. Ritter, awesome, great guy, knows his stuff. Spends a lot of time with his kids. They do a small engine class. They teach kids how to work on your lawnmower engines and things. It's a really, I mean, it's, it's such a diverse population. When you look at North Harden, because you get a lot of, yes, you get a lot of the Radcliffe kids, but you also get all the Rowneyville kids and they all get along. And then, you know, like North Harden has one of the best bands, um, in the state of Kentucky. They have a great athletics program. So it's not like it's this place where you're walking in. I feel like people, when they talk about North Harden, who don't know the area, feel like you're walking in through metal detectors and there's drug dogs walking down the hallway and all this stuff going on. And that's just simply not the case. And so... Another thing that we find funny is, is like, so my kids went to North and they went to Central Harden High School. They've been in both schools. And what we found out real quick was they all know each other. It's a small town. Like the high schools are like maybe 15 minutes apart from each other. And they all see each other and they become friends and they all get jobs at Chick-fil-A or the movie theater. And they're all buddies. It's not like there's this huge separation or this huge rivalry. Sure, when they play football on Friday nights and they play the in 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 town rival, yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, they have fun with it, and then they all hang out afterwards. In town city, I mean, it falls into that one as well. I mean, they're all pretty much the same friend. They're all friends, and they all know each other. We all go to the same church, or we all do the same stuff, or we all see each other at the sports park, or they all work at Chick Fil A, or the movie theater, or the mall, or whatever it is, Target, whatever it is. They all know each other, and they're all get along. I mean, you know, your your kids will find their group. And their group may not be North Harden. It might be scattered across four high schools. And besides, they're all playing Xbox together and they're all FaceTiming each other. And I know that for a fact because my kids do the same thing. So, you know, it's, I think, getting back to the point of this, getting back to the point of the point is, is North Harden is not a bad school. It's not some place that I would feel unsafe sending my own kids to. I have sent my kids there. Again, going back to, if you want to see the numbers, go to greatschools.net. Uh, it's a great place to do your research. But as far as like the community of, of 
North Harden and Central Harden and John Harden and Eton High School. It's really just all one big community. Point number four. This one really needs to be put in perspective because we deal with a lot of people and, and me and Valerie have traveled a lot over the years and, and, and we've been to different places and we talk to play, people who come from like different military bases or different cities that are much more dense population than what we have in Hardin County. If you live in Radcliffe and you want to do any shopping outside of like um, Walmart or Hibbit Sports or just like the basics, you got to go detail. So like, again, I think people don't want to live in Radcliffe because you hear like a lot of people like, well, if I want to go to Target, I got to go to Radcliffe or I understand that. But when you look at the difference in pricing of houses and the money you could save, maybe it's worth a 15 minute drive to Target. I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a decision that you have to make personally. But, you know, that's the thing about Radcliffe is there's not a ton of shopping. And honestly, if you were lived in Radcliffe and you went through West Point and you headed to Louisville, 15 minutes is going to put you almost to Jefferson County and, and you're not that far from the malls in Louisville, which is really where the good shopping is if you want to get down to it. If you're looking for Target, Coles, or Old Navy or something, yeah, you got to go to E-Town. Um, and it is literally a 15 minute drive. And while you're there, if you go to Old Navy, go to Chick-fil-A. So let's talk about entertainment. So entertainment, I'm gonna lump a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, things to do, places to eat, parks, outdoor stuff. So Radcliffe has Saunders Springs, which is right off the Wilson Gate, which if you're coming to Fort Knox, it's Saunders Springs is like between the Wilson Gate and Walmart. It's actually a really nice park. There's some really nice walking trails there. And they got a nice little lake. And there's a beaver up there. If you catch him right and you make him mad, he'll smack your tail at you. True story. But if you're going to go out and eat other than fast food, ooh, fun fact about Radcliffe. Totally could be making this up. This could totally be a urban legend. But they told me as a kid that Radcliffe had the most fast food restaurants within a, like a linear distance, like a drive, like within a so many mile drive of any place in the world. So much so that it was at once upon a time in the Guinness World Book of records and I could totally be wrong on that but that's what they told me as a kid. It's kind of like the mist of the gold vault. Is there really gold in there? If you get in there will they flood it with a river? Do they really foam it down and make it like a human flypaper if you get inside? Who knows? We'll just have to ask James Bond. I bet there's a Chick-fil-A in the gold vault. Anyway getting back to the point entertainment. So look if you live in Radcliffe and you want to do anything besides fast food um, or like some really good local Korean food you got to go to you got to go to E-Town Louisville. And so E-Town has all your restaurants, it has the movie theater, it has all the shopping. But going back to the entertainment side, I mean that's what it's a steak if you want to go to a steakhouse or if you want to go see a movie or go play putt putt golf or go to Freeman Lake or do any of that stuff or the sports park. I mean you just got to run over there. But sometimes you you know, but when I say you run over there it's a, it's a 15 20 minute drive at the most. Maybe that difference in house pricing, which there is a difference. It's not a tremendous difference but there is a difference maybe that is worth the being able to get the house you want or maybe you just want to be close to Fort Knox because if you live in Radcliffe I mean you can be on base in 10 minutes well, this is a long way to say like Radcliffe is not a bad area it's not an unsafe place to live I think the big reason people say you want to live in E-Town is just because that's where most of like the fun stuff happens Radcliffe gets a bad rap of that I think Radcliffe would have more stuff to do if it wasn't landlocked by Fort Knox so maybe we need to call with whoever and see if we can buy part of Fort Knox and expand Radcliffe. I don't know how that would work. Get any ideas, let me know. But seriously, Radcliffe is a great place to live. I've personally lived there. We've owned houses in Radcliffe uh, a few times. So, you know, we, you know us, we move around part of because of what we do. There's housing in Radcliffe that is 600 plus thousand. So it's not something that you find in a bad area. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it's helped. Um, please like and subscribe. Again, you know, our, our contact information is in the link below. Hope everyone's doing well. If you're coming to the area, welcome. Uh, hopefully we get to meet and uh, safe travels. We'll talk to you real soon.